Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Yes, I'm not in Moscow region, I'm in Moscow today. I know that because I even checked on Google how far I am from Moscow because a lot of people comment that I mention I'm in the wrong place but I'm in Moscow today. I'm going to go check out a Russian owned supermarket and it's right behind me. Now, just on the other side of this highway here is a shopping center called Avenue. Now, this was one of the first shopping centers I ever came to in Russia back 10 years ago, because this was the last stop on my metro line. Now there's another six more stations, and I used to come here daily. Now, a lot of people will tell me, Russell, that's not a typical shopping center, this four level shopping center. I want to see you in a typical Russian shopping center. Now, if I literally just turn around, right here we're just going to spin around a little bit now this place right here with its kind of eccentric kind of uh balustrading and uh roof here this is a typical russian shopping center now firstly it's only two levels it's not really very big it has a bank it has another bank it actually has a sushi place on the second level there called Menza, which I've been to with my wife quite a lot of times because we like to go up there. You can actually sit on that second level and overlook the beautiful vistas here at Yugozapana metro station. This is actually the metro station we are here, Yugozapana. And this is what we've come to see. This is called Victoria Supermarket. Now, the interesting thing too is it's open 24 hours a day. So we're going to go check this out. And we're going to see what a real Russian typical supermarket looks like. Have a look at all the nice flowers here as we walk in. And almost the colors of the Russian flag, almost. They've kind of got purple flowers instead of blue flowers, but I'm pretty sure that's the look they were going for all along the outside of the shopping center here. Now, a shopping center can be quite general in Russia. These smaller two level ones, one that's four levels, six levels. There can be all sorts of sizes, but this is a Russian typical soup shopping center and a Russian typical supermarket. Now this is Russian owned as well. So finally I found somewhere that's Russian owned. Now if we went up these stairs, we'd actually end up at the sushi place, which we're not gonna go to today. I don't want to have sushi on my own without my wife. Now these Victoria supermarkets are actually all throughout Russia. There's only a few of them here in Moscow. Most of them are not in the center of Moscow. They're in the kind of regional or outlying areas. Kind of coolest thing too, I just noticed this. There's a small cafe here or coffee shop. So you can get yourself a coffee. We've got there junk mail right at the entrance here so you can figure out what's on special this week and even though it's such a tiny it's actually not a very big supermarket it kind of gets bigger as we walk in they've still got the baskets where you got to put the coin in so that you don't take this home with you or put it in the back of your car or something kind of interesting as well they've got a small jewelry shop right here if you want to get yourself some jewelry not to show how much People buy from the jewelry shop, but uh, I was wondering. And as I've pointed out in a lot of videos, most people aren't gonna get shopping baskets, although you can get them with the 10 rubles. People get these kind of hand trucks and hand baskets. And this is the very normal way to shop. Most people aren't shopping, they're weekly shopping in a lot of these style shops. They're gonna go to smaller uh, shops and just do shopping for maybe a couple of days, today, tomorrow, the next day. Have a look at the first thing when we come right in. Corona. What happened, Corona? I thought you left Russia. And they've even got proudly displayed there the Mexican flag right on the sign, which is kind of nice. They've got a small uh, kind of deli section here, hams and cheeses. They've even got a healthy section. Oh, also stuff for barbecues. They've got a little bit of everything. We need to do a bit of a walk. Oops, sorry. We're going to do a bit of a walk around here and sort of check out all the shelves, get a bit of a tour. Healthy section, all the seeds, nuts, There's some cashews there, dried mango, apricots, and then 
So these Russian <laughs> typical supermarkets, I know I'm saying it a lot, I'm sorry, but I've been questioned this so many times that these bigger hypermarkets are not typical. And this kind of store really is far more typical. Now, they don't have an extensive uh, section of uh, fruits and vegetables. They just have the bare essentials. So your potatoes, onions, carrots, beetroot, there's cabbage, and that's it, simple. And the one thing that you've got to do here too, which I've shown this in a quite a few different supermarket videos, you put your items on the scales, you press the button, and it issues you a sticker right here out of this machine. And you actually self-weigh your own fruits and vegetables. And you'll see here, very classic Russian vegetables here, tomato selection, cucumbers. Hello, the <laughs> And then uh, there's some grapes here. Oh, нет, пиньо лай по русски. И Австралия. Да, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep walking here. I just chatted to the lady in front of me here. Very, very nice. She was asking where I was from. And we we're just talking about the fruits and vegetables. So yeah, even now it's really coming into strawberry season. So you can actually get them pre-packaged or by the kilo if you like, or just a small bag. So lots of different fruits and vegetables over here. And oranges, mandarins. Apples, always in Russia you can get apples. Doesn't matter what time of year, they're from somewhere in the world. Now the one thing with Russian supermarkets that I'll point out that's quite different to somewhere like Globus or Ashan, which is German or French, is they don't have the widest of aisles and you're kind of sometimes tripping over people to get around. These watermelons, we were just checking, we're not 100% sure where they're from but we think they're from Iran. Now, depending on the season that you want watermelons, they come from different parts of the world. And here is some different meats, chicken, and then there's also some fish over here. Plenty of ketchup, Heinz. These are actually different types of the kind of tomato sauces, but you can use them for barbecuing and marinating, and different things. And they have a lot of alcohol in here. Oops, sorry. And literally, this is Russian style in a Russian supermarket. They kind of have everything a little bit kind of mixed up, uh, depending on what their specials are for the day or the week that you're in here. So you'll sort of see champagne and wine around at the front. And then, I have pointed this out before, so if you've not seen one of my videos, William Lawson is the best-selling whiskey in Russia. And that's why it's stacked up here on pallets. But how about chili flavored? Anybody wants to try the chili flavored whiskey? Let me know in the comments. Kvass. This is one of the most popular Russian sodas or soft drinks, if you like, depending on which country you're from. And you can buy it in these big two and a half liter kind of, I don't know what they call these, pails or containers. It's a uh, a very refreshing drink. It depends on how you're feeling and what mood you're in. You know, if you really want some and love it or not, but it's not everybody's favorite. More beer here. This is interesting. They've actually got the countries right here. So we've got some German beer. And then I think I was corrected before. This was Czech Republic. I think that was. And there's another beer fridge kind of tucked in here. And here's a caviar fridge as well. Actually, all the caviar has the anti-theft containers, a little bit higher priced products. So that's to be expected. Pretty much any supermarket you go to. And now we get to the normal aisles. All of the, actually there's a little bit of an Asian section right at the front here. Coconut milk, soya sauces. If you want to make some sushi. And then some of the different spices and peppers. Pickled vegetables canned vegetables or well, not too many canned vegetables this is pretty apparent any supermarket you come to in russia you're only going to see tend to be peas corn and olives and that's it for your canned kind of foods if you like and then there'll be a bit of canned fish and tuna and that's your canned section done and dusted 
There's even a butcher here in the store as well, for the last bit And there's this gentleman here is cook, cutting all the meats, basically how he wants to put them for a presentation. This is all by 100 gram weight or by kilo. So the thing with these kind of supermarkets, you're not having to buy the specific packaging that's pre-packed. You just buy exactly by weight what you like. There's even a little bit of fish here as well. And this butcher here looks like he's done this a few years. He's kind of checking out what his newest delivery is and preparing it for the shelves. And then we've also got a fresh section over here or pre-cooked food. And I was just looking uh, before I came in for a drink before I started filming because I was so thirsty. They have some nice barbecue chicken here as well. And there's some kind of uh, pre-cooked food here. Pretty much this is essentially heat and eat. So there's different rices, potatoes, there's different uh, chicken, fish, whatever you might want. Actually, that's the chicken cooker in the back there or whatever you call that machine. And there's some nice salads here as well. Again, this is basically by weight. So you just let the lady know which one you want, how much you want weight-wise, and they're just gonna put a ticket on it for you. And the thing with this supermarket, it's very, it's actually quite big, but it's all condensed down. So you don't, it's not like the hypermarket, like Globus, where you're walking for hours on end to get around the place. Everything is here. And there's some nice, uh, cooked ham, salamis, there's some uh, sausage meats right here, also cheeses, lots of cheeses as well, which is nice. Now, it depends on the sort of store you come to, somewhere like this doesn't really specialize in cheese, so you'd really want to go to bigger hypermarkets if you want a bigger selection from different countries, or if you want Russian cheese, you'd go to maybe a smaller Rinnock size shop that would have a lot more uh, specialty cheeses I'm just spinning around here and then there's uh, quite a few aisles of drinks that will come across I'm gonna try and do this in one take if I can so you'll get one nice long video again these narrow aisles you can barely get this shopping trolley through whoever's put these Lay's chips here decided to uh, stack them a little bit awkwardly but over here we've got all the different uh, cooking oils. These are different olive oils, vegetable oils. I'm not gonna point out any pricing in this video. A lot of people do like that, but this particular video, I'm just gonna really show the store and what a Russian typical supermarket looks like. This is as absolute normal as you get in the suburbs of Moscow. There is actually quite a bit of housing in this area as well. There's also the, one of the local uh, universities not too far away. So it's a very popular area to live in and it's not too far from Moscow. Lots of pastas. And then I have pointed this out on quite a few videos, the never ending selection of Lay's chips and the different choices that you can get of Lay's. And have a look, Pringles is meant to not be in Russia. And there's a big stack of it right here as well. There you go, from uh, 3rd of November 22, best before 2 to 24. So these are all current products that are not meant to be here, but hot and spicy Pringles, I'm not sure about those. And Lay's stacks are the ones that were always made to compete with Pringles, but I don't think it would ever be possible. Yeah, whoever the lay salesperson is in, in Moscow, they've got them everywhere in every shop. And it's sort of just strange that, you know, in Russia, there's not kind of competing uh, brands that kind of go up against them. All the different energy drinks. Red Bull is more than available. Adrenaline burn. There's actually some, uh, normal juices down there. They must have got their delivery here. I would imagine they don't have a big back store if they've got pallets laid out in the aisles of the shop. Here's the juice section. Now I have mentioned this probably last year in a lot of videos. 
Uh, can you see how a lot of the packaging is white? And there is not too many that are in darker colors. Actually, Rich has kind of got some that are and some that aren't. So there was a sort of a story uh, last year that there was no ink in Russia. So all the uh, packaging companies couldn't produce the packaging. So they ended up having to go with less ink to save on the use of ink. But it doesn't seem to be an issue to me, but that's what I notice. And then the soft drink or cool drink section. Shona Golovka here. This is very well known Russian brand. Tahoon, which I'm not a big fan of Tahoon, but it's okay. Sometimes if I go to a friend's house, that's what they'll put out the fridge. Did notice they've got the Coca Cola there in two liters. And then over here with the uh, Dobro Cola, which is from the factory where Coca Cola was produced in. Moscow and in Russia. They've also got the other Coca-Cola here. This is imported Coca-Cola from, I believe it was from Kazakhstan. Oh, there we go, from Uzbekistan. So, yeah, you can see the white labels which references it being imported. And then water, Eves or Everest, Everves is what was Pepsi. And then over here, Literally directly opposite is the very well stocked beer section. There's an entire aisle of beer here. And I pointed this out in a lot of videos that you buy beer by the can. So you only need to buy one or two or three, it's up to you. You can buy one, as many as you like. Uh, Stella is my drink of choice. But you'll see here, there's also some micro beer, brewery beers here as well. Budweiser, well and truly in stock. Yeah, there's a lot of different, there's a ton of beer in Russia. I mean, the amount of choices of beer is almost too much. Let's walk around and then there's a frozen section here. It's got some frozen vegetables, frozen chips. I see very, I think it might be the first time I've seen frozen chips. I've never really noticed them when I've looked in the frozen section. That whole bottom section is all ice creams. La Trattoria Pizza, we have this in Australia. This brand of pizza. Just put it straight in the oven and you're good to go. Let's have a look over this side. They've got all of the different alcohols. One thing I do like in Russia, this is kind of interesting, I'll show that in a second, but is these different packagings they've got. So you get the drink and you get some sort of a gift like a glass or a uh, some, uh, maybe a decanting bottle. And I was just having a look at here, this uh, Beluga, you get a can of Coke with it. <laughs> How neat is that? And there's a nice wine section over here. This is kind of cool, they got all the countries marked on here. Spain, France. If you're not sure, just put it in the uh, Euro section. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Georgia, I noticed over here South Africa, there is a good selection, actually a really big selection. Uh, can we see Australian wine? Champagnes, I'm not seeing Australian, what's going on? There must be some somewhere. And then over here are all the alcohols and spirits and Gentleman Jack. From working on the cruise ships and in the duty-free shops, a lot of what we sold was a lot of the more mainstream brands. So coming into this kind of store, you're gonna see a lot of brands that we really didn't have in cruise ships. Jamison we had, Johnny Walker there in stock, Jägermeister, that's kind of interesting. There's Jägermeister, and then there's Huntermaster <laughs> right next to it. <laughs> Tequilas. Even the tequilas I don't really uh, recognize too well. Barcelo is, I know, rum plantation. This is very nice rum. Anybody wants a nice choice for a rum? Captain Morgan. Yeah, they're all of the uh, known brands are definitely here. Then here's the rest of the deli section. So there is some actually uh, heat and eat foods here as well. You can get some soups. Basically put them in a bowl straight in the microwave. You can actually put, even warm them up on the, uh, in a pan on the stove. 
these uh, deli hams which we buy quite a lot for snacks or make a sandwich with some cream cheese very nice yeah there is literally everything in here I wish I had one of these stores where I live I uh, know about this one from uh, coming here so often going back a few years ago now uh, we used to come to the Yugoslavia metro station to go home and we know this uh, sushi place upstairs so I know about this store but I just didn't I someone uh, mentioned it in the comments in my telegram group Russell you've got to go to this Russian supermarket and people commented you know in a lot of videos too that you're concentrating a lot on the foreign companies and not as much on the Russian companies here's all the cleaning products ferry what's going on it needs to be lower should be 99 rubles not 129 I'm gonna wait till it comes on special or <laughs> check out another store my wife will kind of make me mad about it she'll go oh, don't worry it's only 30 rubles and I'm like I can wait I can go to another store there's plenty of choices here's all the personal care items so pretty much anything personal care wise in this aisle President toothpaste does anybody know the brand President? I'm used to Sensodyne and Colgate that's definitely over there and there's all of the shavers Gillette someone asked me in a video a while ago where have all the uh, shaving blades gone they've all just they're not in they shouldn't be available in Russia and <laughs> they're right in front of us so there is a lot of people who do comment and I really appreciate and I try to read as many as possible and I even try to reply to as many comments as I can about the uh, products that people see in the videos we even got a kids section with some toys Disney princess so not quite Barbie but almost Barbie and here's some nice fresh cakes and if there's one that I like here it's these cream cheese I call them circles but they've got the uh, the filling with the pastry here these circles are very delicious look at that how much of a suggestion do you need cake and champagne right on top of each other there and then we've got a, an aisle here just of candy and sweets Raffaello and these are all of the different uh, luxury chocolates plenty of choices and then biscuits more biscuits even more biscuits does anybody have uh, Belvita at home these are my, one of my mum's favorites she was buying these in Australia the Belvita biscuits and these chips that my wife loves these uh, corn uh, Russian brand chips 55 rubles and I'm trying to get her onto the Lay's and she's like no I like these since I was a child I'm gonna keep eating them um, <laughs> so there's a bread section here now they do actually have a bakery in the back here it's not particularly big so they do have some in-house baking and I imagine they probably do the bread here in the middle section anything that's not in packaging tends to be what they'll do locally in this uh, store you can actually smell the bread from the ovens back there and there's more uh, snacks kind of cookies so I hope you like this longer kind of walk around of a Russian typical supermarket this is as typical as I can find now anybody that's from Russia you can definitely let me know in the comments here's a nice wide section why do they not have the wide aisles everywhere let me know how typical is this compared to the other sort of bigger hypermarkets that I like to go to have a look at how many yogurts they've got by the way or oh, yogurts do you say yogurts or yogurt there's a lot of yogurts and uh, different plenty of butters this has been pointed out in a lot of other people's channels and videos that uh, butter is uh, not available or if it is it's in anti-theft cases but not the case in this store <laughs> literally the only thing I've seen that are in the protective cases is the caviar and that's very much in all shops 
that you'll see caviar in those containers. I don't know why, for whatever reason. I mean, imagine the higher price is a main example of it. Parmalat. Uh, a lot of people have said that this has left Russia, but definitely there. These are all the long life milks, different flavored milks. We actually had this Ulpro in Australia. So, ooh, look at that banana milk. How does that? I love banana chocolate, but banana milk. And then eggs and mayonnaise. So if you're gonna make Olivia salad or potato salad, you need lots of mayonnaise. And all of these are all different flavors of mayonnaise as well. So not just necessarily the kind of classic stuff. See egg and avocado and tomato. So you can get different flavored mayonnaise. Eggs. So they actually have eggs here, loose, which is interesting. And then you've got eggs in the boxes of 10 and 30. Now you wouldn't see that in any of the bigger stores in Moscow. Even in my smaller local shops, we don't have it like that. But uh, you'll only tend to see that in a Rynek, which is a food market, uh, where you can just buy whatever quantity of eggs you want. There is uh, breakfast cereals. Not too much in terms of packaged breakfast cereals in Russia. It's not something that children tend to wake up to eat than what kids do in the rest of the world. A lot of them tend to have oats and porridge, like you'll see down here. It's more of a common kind of food. No worries in Russia with plastic and disposable paper plate. Well, I was gonna say paper plates, plastic plates and plastic cups in Australia, these are all now banned. And in Russia, they're <laughs> right here in front of me. Here is the large water. That's what we like to see. 99 rubles for the big water. Nice price. And if you want the off-brand, 49 rubles. Uh, the teas and coffees, lots of choice. Even for what would be a small supermarket. There's plenty of choices. Nutella, definitely in the shop here. And then got some uh, cleaning products and towels and plastic wrap, garbage bags, baby food. Always interesting this, how they kind of, uh, you're really limited where things can go in this kind of store because of the layout. So the cleaning products, garbage bags, and then the baby food. You know, this could be probably closer to the normal foods, but that's how they got it laid out here. And then I want to shine some shoes. Need a light bulb. They've definitely got that as well. It's, uh, this is the thing when you come to these Russian supermarkets, they really have to kind of fit the store and the space and the layout. What did I ask for two? Uh, whereas the uh, pre-made well, the custom-built supermarkets can definitely kind of determine the layout before they finish the, the shop. Washing powder and uh, different um, conditioners. I've got to think of the names of things. There's some washing up liquids, dishwashing uh, tablets. They're pretty much one of the things that has gone up in price in Russia. Uh, my wife, uh, the apartment we're in now has a dishwasher and we've never had one before in all the years we've lived here and we were kind of in shock at the price of these tablets. Is it the same way you live in the world? Let me know if dishwashing tablets are expensive. And then we've nearly walked our way around the store, almost. And you know, there's some pastas on special here. A lot of these middle islands have got the different sale items. So Barilla. I think a lot of people know Barilla pasta. There's some uh, cooking oil there. And then cat food. And then more cat food. It's not a big display of it here, but again, for this size of store, it's very well stocked. It really does have everything you need and more in here. Some more ice cream, more mayonnaise. There is pilmene there, or dumplings, as they might be called to a lot of people. <laughs> Ladies' stockings. And 
I was just noticing over here, they don't have the Coca-Cola sign on the fridge. They've actually got the brand of the supermarket on the sign up there. And they've got all of the uh, Dobra brand colas in there. And they've actually got the one litre classic Coca-Cola tucked in the same fridge. And then uh, other kind of beers and cool drinks. So yeah, it's a very interesting store walking around. And then we're almost back where we started. More ice creams. Good time of the year. It's beautiful and sunny outside today. So it's ice cream weather, 100%. If you need something for your garden, there's a little gardening section in the corner there. A little bit of uh, kitchen stuff. There is a bit of everything in here. It's really uh, kind of squeezed in all the corners. Now the one thing I want to point out towards the very end here is, okay, the lady here is standing up, but she has a chair to sit down on. And there is actually the staff at the checkouts here. And this is the gentleman who's been here since I walked in a little bit earlier. And he's more than comfy on that chair right there, happily helping everybody. There is a couple of self checkouts over here on the left hand side, but everybody comes to the normal cashier right here and pretty much walks past the self checkout, although they're here, just people aren't used to it. This is very much a local supermarket for everybody we see in the video walking around today. So these have been installed probably recently. And just people just aren't used to using them. They're much happier to come to Kobe Bryant right here or LeBron James and uh, be helped by him. Okay, so as I walk on outside, I just want to give you a few final thoughts and something you might want to comment on as I head outside of Victoria Supermarket. Now, the one thing again which is important with this place is it was 24 hours a day open, which is kind of interesting. Now, there is other 24-hour supermarkets in Moscow. This is not the only one. Uh, but this is a very, very good example of a Russian typical supermarket. Now, I know a lot of people will again question what the word typical is and this is definitely in a suburban area in Moscow as well. It's not in a fancy part of Moscow like Moscow City with all the high-rises. This is very much a working class area very close to university schools, a lot of apartment buildings nearby so it actually uh, may not look too busy in the shop while I was in there, but again, uh, these are open around the clock. So people who will finish work a little bit later on tonight will be in here. Someone will go in here in the morning, grab a coffee on the way to the metro. So yeah, let me know what you think of the video. Post a comment. Is this typical to where you live? Maybe you live in Russia, maybe you live somewhere else in the world. Let me know. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Be honest though, if you think it's good, thumbs ups are always good. Thanks everybody for being a subscriber and a channel member. I do appreciate you uh, being part of the family of Traveling with Russell, or the, part of the community of the channel. I appreciate that a great deal. Uh, there's another video for you to watch right after this one. You can click that as, anytime you like. It'll be an old video from the channel that you might not have seen. And I'm off on another adventure. Bye, everybody.